Hi guys. Um, thank you for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, today's sermon is called The Lord of the Leftovers. Let's pray. Father, I praise you for what you've done and what you're about to do, Lord Jesus. Fill my mouth with what, with what you would have me say. Um, do what only you could do. You're great, so great to us, and you love us, and you're just so amazing. Um, speak to me, speak to me in the name of Jesus, amen. Hey guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me today. This sermon, as I said, is called Lord of the Leftovers. Um, last week, week on Sunday when I was, um, in church, st uh, streaming, but I call it in church. When I was in church, uh, um, one of the new songs that, that, uh, Elevation Church sang, uh, I forget what it was called, but it was a brand new song, and it had the words, uh, Lord be an altar, and I was like, oh, wow, they used that line, because I remember um, Pastor uh, Furtick saying, about the writing of Oh Come to the Altar, which is one of their most popular songs. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a savior, isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is wonderful. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. So anyway, that's O Come to the Altar by Elevation Worship. Um, it's It came out in 2016. Anywho, I remember uh, Pastor Furtick talking about uh, the writing of that song, uh, He's not only one of the the best preachers in the world, but he's a phenomenal songwriter. Um, he would say differently, but I really, really make to differ. Um, he was anyway. He was saying the writing of that song was so tough because what had happened was he had had. Um, the title, uh, Lord Be an Altar, in his phone. And then he started singing it ar around, couldn't come up with anything, gave it to his team, they couldn't come up with anything. But at the last minute, um... Uh, his team said, you know what, we can't come up with anything. And then um, someone sang uh, a lyric, and, and he said, oh, uh, Chris Brown, who is now uh, the head worship leader at Elevation, he's been that way for, I think, about 17, 18 years. Um think about maybe 16 years now, um, and 
Chris Brown sang the lyric. And then the song just took off from there. So back to last Sunday, I was in worship, minding my uh, holy business, worshiping. And then I heard that same lyric, Lord be an altar. And I remembered that story um, originally, how that was the song title uh, that Pastor Furnick had for what came to be, Oh, Come to the Altar. And it stuck with me. And the Lord, and at that moment, the Lord spoke to me uh, in a whisper. He said, I want you to talk about the Lord of the Leftovers using the backdrop of the story. So I'm here to talk about the Lord of the Leftovers, <laughs> um, meaning that he's the Lord. You may have think, thought you lost something and you're left over with, with nothing. But your nothing is something when you put it in the hands of the Lord. Um, on my Facebook, if you look on my Facebook uh, tagline, I say, I am, no I am nothing. He is everything, and through him I become something. So not to say that I'm a piece of dirt or whatever, I'm not. But in the grand scheme of things, my humanness, not who, who I am as a person, but who I am as a human is far, is far inferior than who he is as God. But but when he works through me, we can do mighty works together. And and I just came to say that you work so hard for something, whether it be a job or a relationship and, or a relationship or whatever, and now it seems to, to be like you are left with nothing. But the Lord wants me to say to you, it, it's not over. Because he's the Lord of what's left over. Whatever you have left over, he's the Lord of it. It kind of reminds me of that common story in, in the Bible about that the woman who, um, who just had... Um, a little bit of oil, and he sa she said, after that little bit of oil, um, after I eat this little bit of oil, it's my son. My son's going to die, and so so the prophet said. Uh, collect jars, and she looked at him like he was uh, kind of crazy. She's like, what? The prophet said, collect jars. And, uh, and then the woman collected jars, and then the prophet prayed over it, and the oil began to over, to not only fill the pots, but overflow. And the Lord's saying, if you put what's left over in my hands, it will not only provide your needs, but it will be overflowing. The Lord's saying, if you put what's left over in my hands, it will be overflowing. 
and he's saying it's left that thing didn't work out because I needed to teach you something in that and I need I needed to teach you either what you needed to work on or I needed to teach you a lesson in that that's why it didn't work out and he says sometimes it, it in in life we can't see it when it's happening but we will see it at the end of it when it's all over and he says but but truthfully sometimes we won't and it's okay if we don't know all the answers on this side of life we don't have to that he's he's the master of what's left over and he'll use what's left over for his glory so don't worry about what you lost worry about not worry about be thankful for what is left don't worry about what you lost at all be thankful for what is left because God is going to uh, do something that you wouldn't believe. And yes, it's hard. Yes, it's rough. But he's got you and there is no way he's going to let you fall. He loves you so much. I think we, we sometimes uh, look at what's lost. And we look at what we what we misused, what we mishandled, what we missed mis um, appropriated. We we look at that and we say, "Oh God, how can you redeem this?" But not only can he redeem this, but will he redeem this? And the answer is yes. He's the Lord of what's over, what's left over. And he will take what's left over and create something beautiful. You know, a few years ago on Netflix, they had something called the Leftover Challenge, which means everything, which means that the contestants would get foods that people usually throw away, um, a list of foods that people, um, the ends of stuff like the, the carrot uh, leaves and the, the dregs that people throw away. And their assignment was to create something new so sometimes most times when in leftovers it's what people would throw away but the Lord wants me to tell you that he will use what's left over to create something new back to the song thing again that line for that song, Lord, be an altar, was not meant to be used at that time. It was meant to be used in this other song. He, God used what was left over to create this, this new song. So, the Lord is famous uh, um, for using what is left over and making something beautiful. And I want to talk to somebody about um, your life and how um, what you've thrown away like 
like looked at as, oh, that's so good anymore, or that can't be used anymore. God is going to use it for his good. And because all things work together for good to those who, who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And when he says all things, he means all things. He says what he means all the, every time. So when he says all things that are working together for good, that means all things. And he knows it's hard to trust. And you know what? That's okay. That's okay that you, it's hard to trust. It's okay to not be full of faith. He'll take you as you are, and he'll get you to where he wants you to be. He's the Lord of the leftovers. And there is, there is someone listening to me today who, who has been thrown away, who's been told, oh, you'll never be anything, or you'll be just like your mother, or your father, or whoever. But the Lord says, I'm going to be using the people that have been thrown away from, from wonderful things. He says, I'm going to I'm going to be using the broken pieces of your life for my glory. Um, I'm I'm writing. I'm in the midst of um, writing two books, and one of the books I'm writing is called. The Beauty of Broken Glass. And this, this book is about um, a singer who, who gets involved with the wrong person and they start having issues in their marriage. Anyway, they... Um, they break up, and then he's left with all this damage and all this baggage from this uh, celebrity marriage that broke up. And then when he gets into this relationship, into this other relationship, He's so full of this hurt and this baggage from the first woman that he hasn't really dealt with it. And he puts all the insecurities onto the second woman. And then, um, and then the second woman is like, you know what? I can't handle this. I love you, but... But I can't, I can't handle three people being in our marriage instead of two. Because sometimes with baggage and broken relationships, if you don't heal from, from a broken relationship, you'll in some way carry that baggage over to the current relationship. So maybe that's, could that be the problem? Why you can't find a steady relationship where things keep happening? Because you haven't dealt with the issues from the first relationship and you bring it into the current relationship thinking, the current person is just like that first person because your eyes are colored and the hurt is still there. And what happens is um, Travis's current wife, 
His name is Travis. Travis's current wife is paying for what his previous wife did. So what Travis has to do because he doesn't um the Travis goes to therapy and says, What do I do? My second wife is about to leave me and I don't want her to leave me, but I don't know how to trust her. I I don't know how how to uh to let it go the hurt from my first marriage. And the therapist says you he she said you need to go go back and res, uh, resolve and find out the root of what went on. So in, instead of going to his his ex-wife, because she's kind of flighty and he doesn't want to see her, so he doesn't go to her. He goes to the person that his wife left him for. His wife happened to leave him for another female person. Um, it was a whole thing where... Um, the way he fi- found out they were getting divorced was um, she went on a, a night talk show and said to the world that she finally found uh, someone to love her. And and she brought out her, her then-girlfriend and did this whole female-female uh, kissing thing on TV. So that's how he, f- he found out that they were uh, getting divorced. And um, so he went back to find out what went wrong in their relationship to try and heal from his relationship. And the the woman told him a story about how um, she got so mad at his ex-wife that she threw a glass against the wall um, because... Um, She got so mad because she wanted to do a romantic, kind of a romantic dinner. But she was late and she just didn't care. And so what happened was after she said, I'm leaving, it's been fun, ha, 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 is... It was um, um, so so she got so Chelsea got so mad that she broke a glass. She broke. She finished a wine glass and broke it against the door, and it shattered in pieces and then when when Chelsea was cleaning the pieces off the floor um she saw the light coming from the window because the sun was setting so she saw the light coming from the window and um And uh, and she she thought to herself, she looked at one of the shattered pieces and saw beautiful light shining through, 
and the colors that the sun was making uh, using the light shining through the broken glass. She said, and she realized in brokenness, sometimes in brokenness, light shines through and creates something beautiful because the designs on the glass even though the glass was shattered, the broken pieces coming through the, the light coming through the window was making beautiful colors and was shining beautifully through the window. And so I said all that to say, what's left over it's going to be made into something beautiful. And you, may, and you may ask me, why did you make it? Why did you make her, um, his wife leave him for another female? I did it because I wanted to say, whatever human you are, we all experience pain. We all experience suffering. We all experience um, heartbreak, heartache. And, and, and whether you agree or not, or wh wherever you stand on the same-sex issue, I wanted to say um, that we all experience pain, we all experience heartache, and one thing I know about God is before he sees your sexuality, before he sees your male or fe and femaleness, before he sees anything, he sees your humanity. And I think, and I think that's the problem with the world. We don't see each other's humanity. We, we see each other in male or female, black or white, gay or straight, or, you know, we see things through lenses and then we, we shouldn't. We need to see people's humanity. So, when I'm speaking, what, whether I'm writing or whether I'm writing for music, writing music or writing a book or putting together a sermon, I'm putting it together for all kinds of people, whether I agree or disagree or whatever, because we all are human, and I think we need to see each other as human. So that's why I made um, I made Trish leave Travis for Chelsea because I wanted to say that we are all human. We all bleed the same, and we don't have to agree or whatever. We don't even have to understand each other. We just need to see each other first as human before we see each other as black, before we see each other as white, before we see each other as LGBT or whatever you are. We need to understand that before all that, before rich, before poor, before disabled, before any of the metrics that we can use, we're all human. And if we look at each other through a human lens, that's when we'll see people the way God sees people. I think... I think that's why we're so divided, because we refuse to see each other 
as a human and we see each other in terms of color or in terms of male, female, and all those things are wonderful. They're to be celebrated. Celebrate the fact that you're black. Celebrate the fact that you're female. Celebrate the fact that you're, you know, Mexican. Celebrate those cultures. But first, see each other as human and and let the beauty of culture and gender be an additive not to discriminate you but to beautify you in the course of being human. So guys, um and I want um I just wanted to say that um because what's left over after you take away the metrics, going back to what's left over and what's common to us all is our humanity. And I think if you see um, people as human first and that everything comes second, that everything else comes after that, it'll be a better world. And I think that's one thing I loved about Jesus. The Lord saw people's humanity, whether uh, you were rich, as in the rich young ruler, whether you were a you know woman, as in the woman at the well, and the woman caught in adultery, uh, the Lord was always for the underdog, and that's why I'm, I'm, I really admire Jesus because he was always for the underdog, and he saw people's humanity before he saw their inadequacy or where they needed work. Um, he saw their humanity, and he still does today. He he sees your humanity. He sees that you're human. He sees where you fall and he says, you know what, despite all that, I love you and I want you to be mine. I want you to be mine. I want to be in relationship with you. And he's dying right now to be in relationship with you. Um... So, all you have to do is call out to him. Be honest about where you are. Say, say, God, I, I have no idea, like if you exist or whatever. Um, and just pour out your heart. Just pour out your heart, and he'll take the broken pieces and what's left over of you and turns something um, beautiful. And let me turn it into something beautiful. And let me say, all those people that made fun of you, all those people that didn't understand you, all those people that told you you were idiots and didn't do any, wouldn't do anything, they lied to you. The Lord says, the one who made you said, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And he will use the, he's the master of the leftovers. Because Lord, when you say the Lord of something, it means the master of everything. Um... It means the Lord of the leftovers. He's the master of what's left over, and he'll he'll make something beautiful out of it. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Bye.
See you next week.